Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. And in this special Arctic edition, I'll be getting as close as I can to the North Pole. You have the actual North Pole. There's actually ice from the North Pole sitting right here in this box. First, let's look at the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service, which shows that globally, February 2023 was the fifth warmest on record, with temperatures 0.3 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average. If we look at the temperature anomaly map worldwide, we can see a few standout features. Firstly, in northern Canada and parts of the western US, temperatures were several degrees below average last month. In Europe, it was generally warmer. Temperatures for February were 1.2 degrees Celsius above average for the month. And then in dark red, above Norway and Russia, temperatures were 6 degrees or more above average in February. And those warmer temperatures in the Arctic last month come at a time of year when sea ice should be plentiful at the end of winter. But if you look at the data, that's not really the case. Sea ice extent was at its second lowest level on record for February, and sea ice concentration was lower than average in the areas shaded in red on the map around western Siberia and Svalbard. So what does that change in the Arctic Ocean really look like? I went to the Norwegian Polar Institute in Tromsø, inside the Arctic Circle, to find out more. It's minus 12 degrees, and today Tromsø appears to be frozen in time. However, this region is changing quickly. The Arctic is actually warming three to four times faster than the global average. CI scientist Mats Gudanskog has witnessed it with his own eyes. When I first ventured out there maybe 20 years ago, it was a lot of pack ice, thick, heavy ice. Nowadays, some years, we have a hard time actually finding a piece of ice, an ice flow to work on. So it's changed pretty dramatically over the past decades. Every year, the scientists sail to the northeast of Greenland to collect samples on the way to the North Pole and then bring them back to Tromsø for study. OK, this is really exciting. We've got special access to go and see Arctic sea ice cores, but it's minus 24 degrees in the freezer, so we're going to need some special gear. Whoa. How's that? All right. Each ice core represents a snapshot of the Arctic at the time it was sampled. This one is, in fact, taken late July last summer when we reached the North Pole. So we roughly had a metre and a half of sea ice at the North Pole last summer. That doesn't seem like very much. Well, it's quite a thin layer, yes, between the ocean and the atmosphere, but typically we would have the order of three metres of ice 20 years ago. In the frozen lab next door, Dimitri Devine studies how the ice was formed. The major changes he sees are in the age and thickness of the ice. The ice is getting thinner and thinner. It won't be able to survive the summer melt. It affects the general age of the ice as well. So the ice in the Arctic is mostly now dominated by the uh, first year ice forms. The older types of ice which would have prevailed uh, 20, 30 years ago in the central Arctic, they are more, more or less gone. The Arctic warming is partly due to what are known as feedback loops. One example is that open seawater is darker than ice, so it warms up faster and accelerates the melt. However, there's still a lot we don't master about this polar region. Sea ice is dependent on the atmosphere and the ocean below, and it's a rather complex system to understand. And I guess the big questions are, what will the Arctic look like in the future? And that's a tough one, I think, because we don't yet fully understand how it's functioning today. Well, that's all we have time for, but you can read a lot more on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.